Welcome back everyone. So the first public beta of Android 11 actually came out and I want to talk about some of my favorite features about this specific update. Now I have it installing on my Pixel 3a XL, Pixel 2 XL and it just so happened that I installed on my kind of old, not really that old, Pixel 2 and I love this phone a lot. And the fact that this thing is still getting updates even though it's not an old phone is still really really awesome in my eyes. So now I want to hit on the top 5 reasons but I think it's more than top 5. And this update, I'll be honest, isn't a crazy big update by any means, but there are some really cool small refinements that, that Google actually put in this that actually make it a pretty decent update in my opinion. Again, not groundbreaking or anything, but it's definitely a step up from Android 11 in my opinion. So the very first thing is actually the app permission. So when you go and open an app for a first time, I don't know if, I, if any of these I've already had. But basically you usually get like a little permission box or something that comes up and it's like oh do you want to allow this do you want to allow this the microphone this and that well what's really cool about android 11 is that you can actually go and give those things and give those specific apps permission for one-time use so i think it's like it says only this time or allow these things this time only but ask next time so that's a really cool thing i think that's a step into the privacy department and i think that's a really cool thing so so shout out to google for putting that into this specific update but that's probably one of the more boring aspects to be completely honest. A really cool visual change, and this is probably my second thing, that Android 11 brings is actually a new power menu. So if you hold this down, usually a little thing will come onto the side or something that'll say, oh, power down, shut down, whatever. But now you actually get into a little bit of a different panel. Now, within this, you can still hit the power button, you can still restart all this stuff. But if you use your phone and you use Google Pay, you can actually have your card here and click on it and actually pay through that way too. Now there's an empty little black box right here and basically if you have any like Google Home Nests or anything like that that you that you have connected to your whatever Google account you can actually see those things here and monitor your things here so if you have a Nest camera if you have whatever I don't even know what else they have if you have those things you have the capability of viewing those things straight into here so they make it a little bit more useful and I think that's a really really cool thing and I hope Apple brings something like this in iOS 14 I think that would be really really awesome. Now another funny thing, and I don't know why they did this, this honestly really really surprised me, but if you actually look in their own little like, you know, the multitasking panel, they actually don't have the kill all button anymore, so you have to still manually go and like delete all of them, which is really weird, but they did replace it with a little bit of a cooler thing, so now you can take a screenshot, so I don't know if it takes a screenshot, so I guess it takes a screenshot of the app as you guys can see, which I think is cool. But it's also kind of weird, I don't know, but a really cool thing within this is that you can actually go and select different things. So let's say I'm on settings, right? If you go and see this middle button share, we'll just share whatever the app is or whatever. But the select button, if you click on it, it'll actually allow you to go and copy certain things from the text of this file. So if you have like a bunch of different things, if you have settings, if you have other things, without having to go into the app, you can actually just copy it here and paste it somewhere else, which I think is a really, really cool. Thing. Now, I don't know how useful it is for a ton of people, but for me, I think it's, you know, it's a cooler thing that it isn't, and I think it's definitely a step in the right direction. <laughs> I just wish they do bring back some type of kill all button or swipe out or kill all, whatever the case is. I think it, it'd be a little bit cooler if they were to do that or even have a fourth button or even allow us to change the share button into that. Maybe they do allow us, I don't know, but so far that's what I've been able to see so far. So that's a little bit of a funny little change right there. Now another thing is kind of surprising and I think it's something really really cool. So if you go ahead and play a song, right? Let's say you play some of my songs, my trash music, alright? <laughs> Told you, okay, make sure you guys listen to my music, links are down below. They actually changed up a lot of the UI. So as you guys can see, the status bar panel actually looks pretty different in my opinion. So the notifications and icons look kind of the same in the settings panel. Some people have said they changed a little bit. I don't really, maybe they changed a little bit, I don't know. But as you can see, the little music bar actually changed a little bit and I think it looks really, really cool. I'm sure different app manufacturers and different app developers can actually go and utilize this and change up whatever they want to. And I think that's a really cool step in the right direction and I'm actually really happy they did that. We swipe down, some people have stated that they were able to get the music panel on this side or something like that. I'm not really too sure how that happened. I've seen screenshots of that. I've not been able to replicate that, which is totally okay. I totally get it, but definitely a little bit of a change here. And also when you actually go into the home screen, the lock screen, it actually looks quite different as well. The notifications and icons look a little bit different here. And also you get a kind of a cooler design overall. It looks really, really nice. This is still, you know, interactive. You can still change the music. If you click on it, you can go into it. But I meant to change the song. I don't know if what's going on here. So I can go and click the song. And you can still change it, which is really cool. I can still pause the music and everything right there. That's obviously, you know, a common thing. But they did change the layout a little bit, which is still really, really cool. And again, I think it's a step in the right direction overall. Now, hopping out, another cool little change they did. 
was actually something they I think they took from iOS. Now maybe iPhones and iOS and Apple took it from some other manufacturer, I don't know. But really when it comes down to screenshotting, they actually change it up a little bit too. So if you go and screenshot and I think I messed it up, if I go ahead and retry it, as you can see, the screenshot actually comes in the bottom corner. So it doesn't come, you know, it so it doesn't just take the screenshot and go away. It actually takes a screenshot and puts a little corner icon just like how we have an iOS. So I'll go ahead and do it again. And I'll go ahead and modify the screenshot. Let me try it again. So let me try it again. I kind of messed up. There we go. I have it. So now I can go and click on it. And it'll go ahead and take me into this little panel. So once I'm here, I can go ahead and modify it however I want to. So if I want to add a text, I can go and click this and click that and kind of draw on it, I guess, I'm assuming. And basically, this is the, works the same exact way. Now, I want to see if I'm able to send it and then delete it immediately like we have on iOS. I think that's a really cool feature. Let me go and click share. I don't even know if it's going to allow me to share it. So I can go and share it. And it does allow me to delete it right on the spot, which I think is really cool. So I think that's a really cool step in the right direction. Now, another slight little thing that actually happened and I was actually kind of surprised about was the whole entire layout of dark mode, which is really interesting. So all the layouts of everything, the way things look, and even clicking on an app of some sort, all the little tiles and everything are actually a little bit darker with Android 11, which I think is a really cool thing. And one place that's really apparent is actually within settings. So if you go into the settings, you can see, you know, it's the standard dark mode. Some elements might be a little bit darker, but the really, really interesting thing, and this totally threw me off as soon as I saw it, was that icons within the whole entire UI have actually gotten a little bit of a refresh. So let me go ahead and get a device that's on Android 10 real quick. So here we go. I know this is really bad, but here's my Pixel 3a on Android 10. And you might be able to tell that the icons are a little bit different on both. I know it's really, really hard to tell, but you guys just kind of have to bear with me. But you can see this icon looks a little bit different on both. The Wi-Fi icons look a little bit different. And it's not only just because they're on dark mode, but it's because, you know, this, the icons are totally changed with Android 11. So that's a really, really big one. I know a lot of people might be, you know, a little bit sad that the whole entire... UI wasn't completely refreshed. I know I'm completely sad with that compl like every single day I think about it, but I still think it's a really cool step in the right direction for them to actually just change the things a little bit and kind of, you know, do little things here, do little things here. And I think this update is going to be a really good one. So that actually changed a little bit. So the icons are a little bit changed, which is good. The quick toggles and everything up here still look the same. I haven't really, I'll go ahead and click on here so you guys can see a little bit of difference. I will say they did add a screen recording icon as well, which I think is really cool. So as you can see, that just came with Android 11 as a whole, I think. I'm pretty sure that came with Android 10 as well. At least I saw it on a lot of different Android 10 devices. But now you do have that capability with Android 11 in case I didn't mention early on. So as a whole, I think this update is a really good one. But I do want to take a quick second and mention, honestly, should you be, you know, sad that this wasn't a complete rehaul, that everything didn't change, whatever? I think there's a lot of merit in that argument, you know what I mean? I think Android as a whole is kind of overdue for a pretty decent update. I think when you look at devices, even like iOS, I mean, they haven't really, you know, changed up a lot in my opinion in terms of the way it looks. But I feel like, you know, with the amount of complaints that it's getting, the number one complaint right now on both Android and iOS is the way it looks. They want to change it up. Luckily with Android, we do have the, you know, option of, you know, putting on a launcher and everything like that. But a launcher won't necessarily change, you know, the system UI. Things like the status bar over here, things like the toggles and the settings, even just the settings app in general, and the customizability that we have within a device. Those are things that a lot of people want to see changed. And I think eventually Google will do it. I think, you know, like I said, they're a little bit overdue, definitely when it comes down to it. But I will say, as a whole... Android 11 is a really good update, and I think even bigger than that, if Samsung and LG and even OnePlus a little bit, if they want to start pushing out more updates to their older devices, this is a perfect update to showcase that too, because it's not a crazy big update. It's not like it doesn't require any more resources or more RAM or whatever that our normal Android 10 phone couldn't already handle. If it already has Android 10, it can easily handle Android 11, and that's kind of how I am. I definitely do think Android 11 could easily be supported on a ton of these devices, and if you already have Android 10 and Samsung, and if anybody from Samsung or anybody watched this video at all, please keep updating your devices, and it's so weird looking at a device with only one camera. I just realized how weird that looks, but ultimately, guys, that pretty much covers it. If you guys have any other questions or you have any other features that you want to talk about, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count, so it means so much if you guys could hit that. Also, check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel, all those links are linked down below. I'd really appreciate it if you guys would check it out. More importantly than everything else, every single one of you guys. Hopefully, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, till then.